So, the folks at Epic Games have just announced Unreal Engine 5.4 the preview and this preview comes with a couple of cool features but one of the features which we're going to talk about today is motion design as motion design has now made its way to Unreal Engine 5.4 and for anyone who has been thinking about getting into motion design or probably you would like to get started with doing some 3D motion graphics stuff then you can go ahead and get Unreal Engine right now and start playing with it. And today we're going to take a look at how you can get started with this and start creating with Unreal Engine. And for those who like to download Unreal Engine, you can simply go over to the link in the description that will bring you right here where you can download the Epic Launcher and install Unreal Engine 5.4. And with 5.4 installed, what we're going to do is simply fire this up and create a new project. The project which we're going to be creating is going to be from the film category and we're going to name this motion design and launch the project. So with Unreal Engine open up right here, you can see that we've got a plain project, no starter content, nothing, just, you know, good old plain project right here. So one of the things you might notice if you've been working with Unreal Engine for some time now, is if you go over to the menu section, you would notice that we have the fuzzy search. So at this point, you can type things and search them automatically instead of going through menus, which is pretty cool. And hopefully we're going to cover a video about all of the cool things coming to Unreal Engine 5.4. I'll probably cover a video about Unreal Engine 5.4 and all the features when this is fully announced. But for those who want to do the motion graphics stuff, let's take a look at how you can get started. And to get started, all you need to do is go over to edit, go over to the plugin section and type in the word motion design. So once you type in motion design, this is currently in experimental. It hasn't even made it to beta yet, so it's still in experimental. So you can go ahead, turn this on and say yes. And this will require you to restart Unreal Engine. And why this is restarting, let's talk about a few things you need to know. Previously, this was known as Project Avalanche, and this has been tested over and over. And the concept of how you get to create 3D and 2D motion graphics with this tool is pretty much similar to what you have with both After Effects and Cinema 4D. And this video is more targeted to how you can use either the Mesh system with Maya or the motion graphics system that currently exists in Cinema 4D. And that basically deals with three major things, namely the cloners, the effectors and the meshes that you're working with. So with this finally restarted, what we can do is to start creating. The first thing which you notice is we now have the motion design button right here. So once you click on that motion design, this gives you a new UI and from here you can start playing with stuff. At this point, you notice we've got a couple of things which includes material designer, create default, you know, the transition logic, all of this will cover in separate videos, but currently we're just looking at how you can get creative. So with this new interface, you would notice right here, we have 2D shapes and these 2D shapes are mostly parametric shape, which means you can go into the details panel and make changes to these, depending on what you're trying to achieve. A beautiful thing with these is they do cast shadow, they understand depth, and it's more like where you're working with After Effects, but in the 3D view. And in this case, you can mix both 2D and 3D to create interesting effects when working with Unreal Engine. These 2D shapes also react to light, and in terms of texture, they do have a certain parameter which you can always use to make changes to them as well. So all of the 2D shapes you'll be needing, you have them right here. You've also got the 3D shapes and you've got the actors. Now within the actors is where you find the null actor, the cloner actor, the spline actor, the media plate, the SVG actor, the effector actor, and also the text actor. So all of the actors you'll be needing, they are all here. We'll also cover some of these in separate videos and today we'll be focusing more about the cloners and the effectors as these are the major ones that you might be needing to start creating. Over here, we've got meshes, which also deals with 3D meshes, and we've got cameras and also lights, which are pretty much the full stuff that we always want to work with. And if you switch from the traditional one, which is what we have here, over to the motion design, you would notice that within our UI, we now have a sequencer. So this would help you with all of the animation things that you might want to do. So let's start creating stuff real quick. Go over to the actors, and we're going to start up with cloners. So I'm going to click on the cloner, go over to your base or you know to wherever you like to have these cloners and place it here so what cloners are basically a uh, repetition of similar geometries or geometries that have been piled underneath a cloner so these can also use ids to individually identify different objects and we're going to take a look at how that actually works so with this we can now go in because if we simply go around our scene you would notice that this isn't properly positioned so i'm just going to go ahead and select that drag this all the way up go to where we have the properties so let's just go ahead and drag that all the way make sure that we have our cloner selected we'll set this to all and we're going to reset everything we'll reset the location and the rotation so we've got everything where we want them to be so i'm just going to raise this 
a little bit upwards and you can see it. So if you've used Cinema 4D before, or maybe you've used Maya before, this is a no brainer. I mean, this is exactly what you've got with those systems. So once you've got your cloners, you can now spawn or link an effector. And so effectors are basically how their names are. This just affects several parts of the cloner mesh. But before we talk about the effectors, let's go in and look at some things. So I'm just gonna drag this all the way up. For the cloners, you've got different layout types. You've got the grid, you've got the line, you've got the circle, you've also got the cylinder, you've got the honeycomb, you've got the spherical uniform, which is a sphere uniform, and you know, you've got the mesh. This would require you to plug in a mesh. Of course, we're gonna do a separate video about this one as well. And you've also got a couple more, which includes the spline, where you have to plug in a spline and use that to add direct what you want. And you know, it simply goes all like that. But now let's focus on the grid. So with the grid, you've got different counts. We've got X, Y, and Z count. And in this case, I'm going to set this to 10, set this other one to 10, and we can set this to one. So you now see what we have. We can also change the spacing. So if we like to space this, you can do all that spacing. And of course, if we have other counts within the Z axis, we can space that too. Let's go in and reset all of this and uh, take a closer look at these things one more time. If we go all the way down, you notice we've got different parameters, which actually deals with a few other things, which will be covered in a subsequent video. Right here, let's talk about the effectors because this is where the whole motion thing starts playing. So in terms of spawning or linking effectors, you can. So I can click over here and this is automatically going to create an effector and link that effector to the model piece or to the cloner that we have. So let's go ahead and change our UI just a little bit, just to make sure that we have enough things to play with. So we're going to dock the motion design right here, and we're going to switch the outliner and dock it right over there. For effectors, your effectors by default, they affect three major parts, which includes the offset, in this case, it is called offset, but in other tools, this could be called translation. It also affects the rotation and the scale. So for the offset, if we like this to offset any object that is within the bounds of the effector by say a thousand, that is what we will get. So once you have this effector selected and you move it around, every object that is within the bounds of the effector simply gets offset by a thousand. So this also has fall off. And depending on the type of effector you're working with, these may be called bounds or radius or, you know, inner boxes or outer boxes. And so within the type of effector, we've got the sphere effector, which is what we're using. And we can simply go ahead and increase the inner bound of the sphere effector, or we can increase the outer bound. So the outer bound serves more like a fall off. So you can see something like that. We can also change this to box. And at the same time, this has an inner extent, outer extent, and you can do all of that stuff. Additionally, amongst all of this, if you like the effector to affect everything within your world, you can set this to unbound. And if you like it to just affect things based off a certain plane, you can set this to plane. So in this case with plane, this is what we've got. So with this idea of what we know, you can now see that we will be able to set our effectors, let's say 150. And if we like this to affect the rotation, we can also do that. So we can set the rotation to about 90. Let's go ahead and also scale the effectors because you can scale the effector in Unreal Engine. So I can have that and we can scale this. So once we scale that, you can now see we can use it to drive other things. So you would notice that anything that is within the bounds gets rotated by that number. Let's set this to 180 so we can see that. And we can also set this to say maybe uh, 45 so you can now see it more clearly. The same thing can be said for scale. So for scale, we can lock the scale in. And so for everything that is within that scale, we we'll like that to be by 0 0.5. And that way we now have it as well. Let's actually drop this down so you guys can see a bit more visible um, change to that. So we can go ahead and take a closer look and you can see that right now. So once we start moving things around, you'll be able to notice that we've got this going on for us. But this is not the only thing effectors can do. Like we mentioned, it affects three major parameters. But then in Unreal Engine, we have something called forces and forces can dramatically affect how objects behave. And currently the forces that exist with Unreal Engine are five. The first one is the orientation force. So with the orientation force, anything within the bounds starts rotating based off the orientation force rate and the orientation itself. So if we set this to about 10, you'd notice they start 
animating really quick. So you can keyframe this if you want. So we can simply just have this effector selected, go over to our sequencer, right? That clicking, dragging and dropping. And from here, we can set this thing. So we can set this right here by turning on the keyframe and we can go over to where we have our location, turn on the keyframe right there, drive this over to a certain point, say maybe 75 for example, and we can change and turn on the keyframe one more time, go over here where we have our orientation force and possibly set this to about one. And so once you have that and you turn on the keyframe as well, you would notice that once you press the playback button, we have, you know, the motion graphic stuff playing back. And because this is Unreal Engine, you can move the timeline however you want, stretch this if you want, and you, you've just got all that creative freedom to do exactly what you want. And so with this, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And so with this, you can select your effector and make orientation animation at any point in time when working with this tool. So, and this is one of the effector forces that exist. Other effector forces includes vortex. So in this case, you do have vortex and you can see all of the magic that the vortex does. We can also go in and reduce that. I'm setting this to 100. And if you turn off the vortex force, and turn it back on and that is where whatever value you've entered gets keyed in so this is real-time motion graphics but then in terms of forces you need to turn this off and turn this back on to get the desired result the same thing can also be said for the call noise so we can turn on the call noise as well and you can see we've got that beautiful call going on we can set this to 100 as well turn this off turn this back on and that is what you get beautiful stuff the same thing as well can be said for the attraction. Everything gets attracted to the center. The same thing can also be said for gravity. So wherever this just travels to, these things start falling down. So if you do have collisions, this is potentially going to collide with those bodies. There are a couple more things I believe most of you guys may want to know in regards to this. One of them is what if you like to have multiple objects in? And if you like to have multiple objects in your scene, what you can do is simple. We can go over to the 3D shape and we can pick out a sphere and we can click to actually create one. So if you hold down shift, you can create a proper sphere. And in this way, we've just added a sphere in our scene. And to have this sphere work with the cloners, we would need to click, drag, and drop it right inside of the cloner. And just like I mentioned earlier, this is going to use some form of ID to place this. You can add additional stuff. So we can, let's go ahead and get a torus. So I can get a torus, hold down shift, click and drag, let that be click go right in here drop it actually let's drop it right in here and that magic starts happening and again the same things that the effector is doing to the cube it would do to all of them and this is one brilliant way of creating you know cool stuff and of course if you do have a model from any other dcc app and you'd like to bring that in you can also do the same thing with it as you can import any model of choice and use that to either replace the default cube or add it up as an additional model piece that will exist with the default cube within your cloners. Let's take a look at how you can add multiple effectors. And for this, I'm just going to go in and delete the default cube. So let's get rid of that. And I'm also going to get rid of the torus. So what we want to do is potentially just get rid of the effector. Let's, let's just get rid of this effector. So we know we have nothing and we can go ahead and select the cloner that we have. And in this case, we would like to make our cloner about, let's play with the size a bit. So I'm just going to set this down to about 100 and 100. So it's a bit more tightly knitted. And for this, I'm also going to set this to 1000 and 1000. So we, we've got a lot, we, we've got a lot going on for us. We can go over to the content section. Let's go in and take a look at the sphere. So we've got that sphere right here. Let's go ahead and change the material for this sphere. Probably something about that color looks good. And for the cloners, I still think they are a little bit more tightly knitted. So what we can do is we can also go in and change the spacing. So I'm also going to go in and change the spacing. Maybe we can set this to about 80 maybe. Okay, now that looks uh, really nice. At any point in time, you can definitely switch to your layout. So probably you want to switch to a top view layout and uh, take a look at this. You can, so you can go ahead, take a look at this from the top view layout if this is what you want. And you can do some very interesting stuff with that. And that will definitely give you some sort of guidance in case you're, you're wondering. And now that we have this, let's go ahead and add some effectors. So to add these effectors again is pretty simple. We can choose to spawn an effector from here or we can go over to the actors and we can click on effect actor. And once you click on the effect actor, click and drop that within your viewport. 
If you go over to your cloner, you'd notice right here where you have effectors, nothing is placed. And for that, we will need to create an array by clicking on the plus button and clicking on the drop down and selecting that effector. And this is how you add effectors. So if you don't want to simply use the spawn linked effector, this is one way to do it. And of course, you can go ahead and check it out. So once we have that, the next thing which we're going to do is go all the way down. And for this, I would like to make this an unbounded one. So let's set that to unbounded and we can go all the way to the mode section and I can set this to noise. So once we set that to noise, what you notice is nothing happens. But if we would like to start cranking things up, we can by going over to the locomotion and we can actually start from there. We can set this to about a hundred and now some noise pattern begins to kick in. Now this noise pattern is happening, but nothing is going on within the pan. So for the pan, maybe we might want this to pan a little bit. We can go in and set that. So I can set this to maybe 10 and we can set this to maybe two, for example. And of course we can set this to also maybe one up potentially 10. Let's see what, what we get. So in this case, we now have some sort of motion going on for the frequency, which deals with the noise frequency. We can set this to a higher value so that we can get something crazy, or we can set this to 0.2 to get something slightly milder. So depending again, what you want to create, you do have um, tools like this. Let's hide that floor so we can see what we've got. All right. So we do have something like this running pretty cool. And for performance sake, so let's actually just drop this down. A thousand seems to be a little bit too much now. So I'm just going to set this to 500 and 500. And now we've got something way more smoother. And I think we should also drop that a little bit down, which has to do with the pan. So we can also drop the pan, say maybe five, five looks good. Okay, so we can drop this to about five. That looks really good. So in this case, you can bring an effector from anywhere and you can add it. And like we looked at, adding a second effector is also going to be a super cool breeze. So to add a second effector, I'm just going to click, drag and drop. And here we've got a second effector. Now for this effector, we would like this to either play or make some alterations when an object begins to get into the bounds or something like that. And so to do that, just like we've done with the previous one, we'll go over to the cloner and we can choose to add or set these to the second effector which we've added, which is effector number three. And for this, let's define what we would like this effector to do. Let's set these to about 500, which might be pretty big. And we can set these to say uh, 150. So that should be a little bit more interesting. We can set that down. And of course, you cannot notice any um, any difference because we haven't told it to do anything. So for here, we would come over to the offset and let's say for the offset, we will want this to, let's say offset by a hundred. Okay. So we will like that to offset by a hundred. And once this starts getting closer to the object, let's move that over to space like so. Once it starts getting closer to an object, let's also rotate and uh, go all the way down to a point like that. Let's make sure we have it. All right. So once this move gets to that point, you can see that we've got that offset. This isn't so visible. So again, I'm also going to go in and increase this to about 800, crank that up, set this to maybe um, 200. Okay. Now we, we, we're getting some magic. And in this case, I'm also going to go in and set this to say 500. Okay. Now that makes sense. So we can go in and uh, let's, take this a little bit upwards, zoom all the way out. Beautiful. So now we've got the second one happening. We can again go over to the force and what we'd like to do is throw in a little bit of a coil and this coil force seems to be too much. I'm going to drop this down to about a hundred and turn this off, turn this back on. And now we have that. Actually, I think we should also drop the noise to 0 0.5 and let's turn this off, turn this back on. And there you have it. So we can now travel through and leave a trail of some, you know, interesting things wherever we're going. And so we can just have this sort of thing happening. But yeah, this doesn't look too necessary. Let's go in and turn that off and just leave this the way it is. So with this here, I'm just going to go in and scale this slightly. So with this here, what we can do is to attach the bolts together. And to attach the two of them together, we would go over to the cloner and go over to where we have the array. So if we go over to the array section, I can click on the plus sign. And with this, I would define the first one 
to be the first effector. So just like you have with Resolve, the layering system is pretty interesting. So we will define the first one, which has to be the background one as the first one. In this case, it is going to be the index of zero. And then we're going to define the second one as the second one. In this case, it's going to be the index of one. And so once we have that, we can now have all of these effectors doing exactly what we want them to be. So in this case, I can have the effector of three, pick it up, and move it around and you can see all that magic. If we also go over to the effector two, probably like to dial this down because we might wanna see a few things happening, we can. So for that, I will set this location to zero point. Actually, let's set this to 10 so we can have a little movement. Or uh, maybe we can set this to uh, say 50. Let's see what we have. All right, 50 looks good. Then we can go ahead and pick this up and maybe we can really crank this one out. A thousand let's get that 1000 in good stuff and potentially we can also increase this to maybe a thousand or maybe two thousand yeah two thousand sounds good so we can have that and you can see with this we can drive some interesting motions in our scene and to animate this is as easy as what we've just seen so you can definitely go over to your sequencer and you can click and drag anything into your sequencer if we like to add a camera say for example we are right around here and we would like to add a camera i would always suggest instead of going over to the the camera section adding a camera yeah don't do that just you go over to this tiny button here and create a camera from where you're looking at and that would automatically create a camera for you and i think this is one of the cool things that you can do so we can create a motion design camera actor and automatically we have a camera and we can simply drag and drop that camera right in here and that becomes the camera for what we are creating at the same time if we would like to animate any of these effectors we can so we can animate these effectors in multiple ways say for example we would like this effector to do a few things maybe it travels from one point like that over to this point or maybe it travels from there comes over to this point yeah we can i, I think we can also just move this around so we can have this travel across the scene, something like so, or maybe something like that, or maybe it just travels from here. Let's get that go from here over to this point. All right, we can totally do all of that. So how to do it is simple. Go in, drag the effector, drag and drop it right here, keyframe different parts. So at this point in Unreal Engine, you can keyframe from this section. So you don't necessarily need to do all of that from the sequencer, as you can now do it from here. So I can just key the location, and we can also go ahead and uh, let's increase the magnitude. I think we should make this maybe uh, four. Four looks good. So we can set that to four. So we can keyframe that. And we can also keyframe the camera as well. So for the camera, we're well, just simply going to go into the camera, go over to the transform of the camera. I'm just going to turn on the key there. And we can crank this all the way to this point. And from here, we can, you know, animate it. So we might want this to just have a simple rotation and we can add a keyframe to that from this part and of course we can go ahead have our you know our effector selected and we can drive the effector you know depending on where we want it to be in space so we might want to drive this over to this point if you would like to switch to any of the axes in this case we can also switch to the local axis and drive it to go anywhere we want maybe something like that and the effector would also do the very same thing that we just wanted to do so we have that right here so if we set this all the way back now and we press the playback button, you now notice we've got the animation plane. And speaking about the sequencer and animation, if you like to combine both the 2D and 3D objects in your scene just to create some sort of after effect animation, you can. So we've already seen how you can bring this in. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and get the ring and we will drag and drop that ring right here. So with this, we can position this right here. Actually, let's go in and do that by simply holding down shift on the keyboard so we can have something more stable so we can drag that in and position it right about a point like so with this here there are some parameters like we mentioned earlier and those parameters are super animatable so if we have this selected and we'll go over to the detail section if we scroll all the way down we can use the angle degree to create some sort of motion graphic stuff so you can make multiple copies of individual ones like this 
and create some very cool effect. This would be super useful for a lot of persons that are trying to stylize their scenes and also drive certain things with it. The same thing can also be said for the text and the other 2D shapes that exist right here. So a combination of both 2D and 3D elements alongside the motion design mode which is now available in Unreal Engine would give you some super useful tool sets that you can use to start creating. So. This is it. For those who are thinking about getting started with this, this is more like a quick pilot course for you guys. So you can get started with Unreal Engine 5.4 and start exploring all of the motion design tools that are now here. In subsequent videos, we'll talk about a few more features that are now available in Unreal Engine 5.4 and also how you can leverage of the motion graphic tools of the motion design tools that are now available. And of course, a huge shout out to the folks at Epic Games for making this possible and accessible to all. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.